Hey everyone, in this tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to create a simple digital drawing using your phone. I'm going to show you the tools you need and the drawing process. This tutorial is for beginners. The app that I'm using, it's called Concepts. You can certainly draw with your finger, but it's not going to be as natural or accurate compared to drawing with a pen or a stylus. Most phones do not come with a pen, so I do recommend you get one if you really want to enjoy the drawing process. These are some of the most common styluses that can be used with touch screen phones. So we have the rubber tip stylus, the disc tip stylus, and this fine point stylus. Advantages of the rubber tip stylus is it can be used on almost all touch screen devices. The disadvantage is because the rubber tip is quite big, so chances are it's going to block the line that you are drawing. So this makes it a bit difficult sometimes to connect the lines properly. But with some practice, you should be able to get it. This is a variation of the rubber tip stylus. It has a mesh tip. This stylus does not work well with my phone. I actually have to press down much harder to get a line. And the thing with such styluses is, um, I'm referring to the rubber and the mesh, the tip is going to wear off and soon it will lose its sensitivity and it will be very difficult to draw lines. And that's when you know you need to replace your stylus. The second type of stylus is the disc tip stylus. It has a disc in front because it needs a large contact surface area so that a touch screen device can detect the pen. This stylus will not work if you remove the disc tip. And the disc is transparent so it allows you to see the line beneath the pen tip. All the styluses that I show you are not specialized styluses for drawing so they are not going to be that accurate. Here you can see the line, it wobbles even though I was drawing curves as smooth as I can. This advantage of this disc tip is sometimes when you're drawing the disc may be out of position so you have to reposition the disc in order to draw. The connection here is a ball. There are styluses that use a spring to connect this part to the disc. I recommend the ball because this is easier to get the disc in position. Now the disc can also wear out in the sense that it may lose its sensitivity. So you may have to replace the disc or the stylus. The disc may also disconnect with the ball if you accidentally hit the pen tip. And this is transparent. If it drops on the floor, it can be difficult to find. I once had to spend a few minutes to find this uh, disc. If you do intend to get this um, type of stylus, get one with a cap so that you can protect the stylus when you need to bring it around. This one is made by Adonit. It's called the Jot Pro. The last type of styluses is the digital ones that have batteries inside basically to power the pen tip to create some sort of magnetic field so that the small pen tip can be detected by the screen. Here it doesn't work because it doesn't have any battery life in it. So that's the downside. You have to charge it and it can run out of battery. The styluses can come in all sorts of uh, shapes and sizes. So this one is flat. Advantages of the fine tip is you can see the line beneath when you are drawing. But such digital styluses usually have the jitter or wavy effect when you are drawing diagonal lines slowly. So here you can see the wavy effect, it's quite obvious. When you are drawing horizontal lines or vertical lines, it works, but not when drawing diagonal lines. The workaround is to draw fast, in which case the lines will be smoother, but sometimes you just want to draw at your own speed. So such styluses are usually good for taking notes, but not that great for drawing. There are many drawing apps available on phones. The one that I am using is called Concepts, which is available on iPhones as well as Android phones. 
This app is free to use with some free tools. However, to unlock all the tools, you have to pay. In this tutorial, I will be using only the free tools. So when you first start up, just click this plus button to create a new canvas. Depending on the phone you are using, the user interface may look different. So here I'm using the iPhone. Let's pick a pen to draw first. So click on the tool. And here you will get a selection of tools. I will be choosing this pen here. If you are using a pressure sensitive stylus such as the Samsung S Pen, you can choose dynamic pen. But if you are using a rubber tip stylus or a disc tip stylus, I recommend just uh, using the normal pen or maybe the fountain. I'll be choosing the pen. Next thing is to pick a color. So just click on this color swatch here and the fly out menu will show you all the colors available. I'm going to just pick black. Make sure the opacity here is at 100%. I'll be drawing my mark here. Don't worry if you cannot draw accurately. That's not the point of this tutorial. The focus of this tutorial is actually to show you the workflow so that you can know what's possible with digital drawing. So first thing to do is to make sure that the sorting here is set to automatic. And now let's draw the mark. Just draw the general shape of the mark. Now you can use finger gestures to move around the canvas. Zoom in and out. So double finger would allow you to pan. If you pinch in and out, you can zoom. And don't worry about joining the lines properly, uh, but do try to join the lines as in don't have um, open gaps like this, for example. And you can double tap. Uh, with sorry tap with two fingers to undo so let me just move down here so that i can draw the pens um, i'm just going to draw a few pens and i'm not even going to copy exactly what i see i'm just using the reference photo as some sort of inspiration but make sure to join the lines together so that the pens um, and pencils they look good so that they don't look weird. Okay, so when you're drawing, try to spend more time observing what you see. So here you see a little gap. Let me try and join that. Now try to do it with one um, line. If you go back and add more and more lines, um, the sketch is going to look quite messy. So there are some pens behind as well overlapping um, overlapped by the pens that are in front this is a cap behind seems to be a pencil behind as well one that hasn't been sharpened yet okay i'm not exactly following uh, following my reference photo Anyway, um, it's done, so now let's color it. So let's take a look at the layers palette. It's actually quite difficult for me to see the layers palette in horizontal orientation, so let me just uh, have the handphone in portrait orientation. Okay, so now the pen is on its own layer because I have sorting set to automatic. If you are using some other uh, drawing apps, you would have to create the layers manually. Here with automatic, it creates the layers automatically. So the next thing I want to do is to color this sketch and I'm going to choose a different tool. So click on the tool again and I'm going to click fill. Now the fill here works a bit differently compared to other uh, software in the sense that in order to fill colors, you actually have to draw the shape. So I'm going to choose another color, choose a very light gray to color this mark, maybe a warm gray so that it's not, the coloring is not that boring. So let's color this handle here. Just draw a shape to color the handle. Certain uh, drawing apps will allow you to actually click on the enclosed shape to fill the color into 
the enclosed shape. Here with concepts, um, they don't have that too, so I have to redraw the shape. So let's um, choose another color here. Let's choose uh, an orange for this orange pen. And don't worry if you are coloring outside of the lines. Remember, the focus of this tutorial is to show you the workflow. Okay, so in this case, um, the colors are actually beneath the ink lines. So here you can see the layers stacking order. The pen is above the fill. If you want the colors to go on top of the pen, you can do so. And it's going to look like this, where the black lines are beneath the colors. So that's what I obviously do not want. So let me move this back down. Just tap, hold and drag the layer. Continue to color your sketch until everything is colored. You can also add some uh, shadows and shading. Here, for example, the light source is coming from the left side. I have added some shadows here. Maybe a little bit of detail to this. I'm going to add some extra shading to the mark to give it more form. So make sure that the fill layer is still selected. And if this part here is taking up too much space, you can click this layers icon to turn off the layers. So earlier on, I use a warm gray. So for the extra shading, I'm going to choose a darker warm gray. And draw the shading here. Nope. Let me draw a bit more accurately. You can draw a few times to make sure that the areas that uh, you want it's properly colored. I can also draw shadow on the table. Now, um, I may want to add a table, for example, beneath all this. So in order to do that, um, let me just create a new layer. So I'm going to click here, new layer. And I'm going to drag this new layer below the colors. And now I can draw my table. Let's uh, choose this yellow. I'm still using the fill tool, by the way. So let me just choose, sorry, let me just draw something like this. I can add some patterns, green texture to the, to the wooden table. Let me choose a different color. I'm going to choose a lighter color. It's just, um, just to add some texture to it. Okay, uh, I think this looks all right. So now um, this sketch, it's, I would say it's complete. The shadow here doesn't look that natural because shadows are supposed to be transparent. Now I cannot see the wood grain beneath. So what I want to do is to select this shadow that I have drawn separately. Just tap and hold onto your screen and there will be a pop-up. Tap it and make sure that it's showing item picker and move the cursor over to the shadow shape to select it. And now, at the tools palette here, change the transparency to maybe 50% and then tap away. And now you can see the shadows, um, it's transparent, but because of the reduced opacity, it's now 50% transparent. The shadows are also made lighter. So what I want to do now is to select the shadow again, once again, choose the item picker and here just pick a darker color so I'm going to pick like um, this warm gray right at the end and then tap away so now you can see the shadow is darker and it's still transparent if you are using some other drawing app to change the opacity or the transparency you may have to change the transparency of the brush first or you can change the transparency 
of the layer that the shadow is on. So this is the completed sketch. You can see it's very loose and sketchy. Now one good thing about this app uh, is concepts. It features an infinite canvas and it's a vector drawing app. So you can keep on drawing and not just that, you can zoom in and out and the sharpness will retain. So you still get the sharpness no matter how, uh, how you zoom. All right, so now that you have this um, sketch, maybe you want to share it online. So you can do maybe a screenshot. To save your work online, just click on this icon here, which allows you to export your art. I'm going to choose JPEG, and I'm going to choose entire drawing. And I'm going to choose um, a high resolution file here, maybe 150 PPI. Any resolution above 1000 pixels is good enough. So earlier on it was just around 600 plus by 600 thereabouts. Just switch between the different PPI here to get the one that's most suitable. After that, click export. I'm just going to export it to the photo gallery. You can actually export your art directly to certain social media websites like Facebook or Instagram. I have it in my photo gallery because I want to do some edits. So here I want to crop it into a perfect square. You can actually do it in Instagram as well, but I'm just uh, showing this functionality to you to show you that you can actually do some edits to your artwork after you have exported it. So, done. So now I have a perfect square image that I can share on Instagram very easily. The last thing I want to do is to name this file so that it doesn't have this generic name. All right, I hope this tutorial is helpful. Thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video. Bye.